Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio. Reporting from the basement of the Dairy Civic Center, this is CM Alexander with the news. A new tell-all biography has been published titled Dead is Better, the Judd Crandall Story, with sections directly taken from a journal that survived the house fire that claimed his life. The story raises more questions than answers, such as why did Judd love the idea of going to Vietnam? How do you tell if you have a son possessed by a Wendigo or if he's just being a teenager? And, of course, did he forget he had a dog as a kid? You're listening to Dairy Public Radio. This is Dairy Public Radio. Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio, a bi-weekly Stephen King Book Club podcast. I am one of your hosts, CM Alexander, alongside Joshua Khan. Hey, everybody. And Eve Gatto. Hey, constant readers. And today we are continuing our Pet Cemetery Revisited with Bloodlines. Yeah, uh, we figured... It w- oh, and Josh is leading us through the discussion. <laughs> Way to just... Wow. I was so just take it. I, you seemed very confused about how, what, how to surmise what we were doing exactly. I was trying to help out. <laughs> but I'm going to cut that part out. So you're just going to look like a jerk. No! <laughs> That's how I edit. <laughs> Your editing is cruel. No, we figured that we were in the Pet cemetery headspace. We might as well, whilst we were revisiting the book, uh, take a, a jaunt over to the new addition to the uh, Pet Sam canon. Yeah, because uh, that was a great idea. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> we watched Pet cemetery Bloodlines. So Did we? <laughs> when was this? <laughs> Just a few minutes ago. I we would ended remember it. watching an entire movie, I'm sure. I would argue that Eve gave up. <laughs> I have argument. no. Uh, you see, I uh, bought some watercolor pens before recording, and for some reason, that seemed a better use of my time. <laughs> and the fact that both of CM and I were like, yeah. No, yeah. Bust it out. <laughs> yeah. At least one of us will have a good time. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is some real completionist shit here. It really is. This is uh, maybe one of the least essential adaptations <laughs> we have watched for this podcast. It's uh, it's a real kick in the teeth because it's something we have talked about wanting from so many Stephen King stories that have the single chapter that's about something that happened that we would love to see fleshed out. And when we get the chance and then it's just not anywhere near what we'd hoped is a, is a real letdown. I just had a sad thought that made me so sad. Oh my oh goodness, no. please share it. I wish this were as bad as Rose Red. <laughs> oh, so a thousand I percent. I could have at least... I don't know, felt something. Yeah. (laughs) Rose Red is dumb as dirt, but it's fun. It is fun to watch. I don't even think it's fun to watch. I think it's (laughs) difficult. (laughs) But I still feel like I got there was something there. Yeah. At least meant a thing. I felt something sometimes. That's exactly it. What the fuck is this? What what is this story telling us? What what is the point? of this story i would love to know if we can unpack that by the time we get to the end of it because i'm not sure there's an answer we we should just go ahead and set this up for any listeners who didn't feel the need to go to paramount plus and watch pet cemetery bloodlines what's it on prime yeah yeah whatever (laughs) Um, we're doing you a favor by telling you the wrong thing yeah i (laughs) We'll summarize uh, when friend of the show, uh, Keaton, asked me, what is this movie about? I told her what I knew about it. It is a prequel about Judd Crandall as a young man telling a some way adapted version of the story from the book about Timmy Baderman. Mm -hmm. And that's all I knew. And she responded with, you're watching a feature length pet cemetery fan fiction <laughs> and i said well nah, yeah pretty much that's what it is well and here's what i thought 
it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more the story of Judd's relationship with the pet mm-hmm. cemetery, which is a, a good story. Mm-hmm. Would have been really fascinating to dig into. But instead, it is with the grace I started giving it was remembering that this is uh, a prequel to the remake. It th- they showed some of the same mask imagery that is in oh, the new yeah. Penn Cemetery mm-hmm. with the kids and everything. Mm-hmm. And so it is kind of attached to that universe. So it is the uh, John Lithgow. This is past John Lithgow. Yeah, this is in yeah. the lithgow verse. Yeah. And he kind of looks like him. He looks like the he could JLCU. be JLCU. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and say what I thought was going to happen and was going to make this okay. Not good. Okay. Hmm. I thought that at the end of the story, the story was going to be about Norma being killed in this Timmy Baderman story. And that is why in the the motivation for John Lithgow is so toward so strong towards Ellie because he couldn't protect Norma. And so that is the. Uh, reason the motivation for the attachment to Ellie mm. when they swap it. I also thought they were killing her off yeah. for her not being in that movie. Like I, <laughs> I didn't think as deeply about his motivation, but I was like, oh, this is this ties to the remake. That's why Norma's not in that because I always forget she's not in the original one mm-hmm. because my brain inserts her because it's so faithful to the book. And this, there's something else that the the remake to uh, the the remake did that I didn't realize until watching this version, which is put Judd more as a guardian than uh, just a a bystander, yeah, just a guy. Well, yeah, because yeah, he's, he's like any a, other town who has a burden of knowledge in the book. Yeah, yeah. he's not special. It makes him special. There's actually a town wide cult about <laughs> the Mac burial yes. ground. Yeah, don't mind that idea at all. I do. I know. I, I think I, the the story they chose to tell, I think, was an interesting one. Mm-hmm. I just didn't enjoy it because I don't like the way they did it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's. <laughs> yeah, I, it I wanna... could work. It's a cool idea. Like any time that there's, it, it, why does it make me think of Hot Fuzz? <laughs> uh, with the because it feels like a parody. Yeah, I I don't know. I I like the idea of like oh, there's a secret shady cult in this town. Mm-hmm. Mm. But crisis is boring. Yeah. So it, we've just been <laughs> trashing it <laughs> so with no context so far. Let's get into it because the I feel like we can break down some very clear reasons why this does not work. Mm. So let's talk about uh the dog swap that we open with. Uh, surprise David Duchovny for all of us. The, the best part. That was pretty great as Bill Baderman. I feel tricked by that now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it really gives you a brief glimmer of hope at the start of the movie. Yeah. You go, oh, fuck, David Duchovny's in this? Okay. I'm going to like this. Yeah. 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 No. No, uh, he is burying Timmy. And moments after burying Timmy, mm-hmm. the dog comes over and sniffs it. And the ground opens up and there's like a bright dead light. And the dog appears to be sucked into the ground and then also dies and is reborn. So I guess they didn't need to pick up a new grave because he was already just pulled into one. I just thought Micmac Paddywhack. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> dog. Oh, my God. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You're good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, it's a way to... Uh, not cry over the dog dying because I hated that. <laughs> I I liked the way it was used. Yeah, uh, it was. I thought it was it effective. Did seem very it quick. made it made Timmy more menacing to have a, an animal companion. But I, they, it's clear that they were like, we can't waste the time to get attached to a dog and then kill it. So just do it all at the top. Yeah, mm-hmm. it it took away some of the weight of what was happening. That it's like, and you know, like. But d- two minutes later, your cat's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be Baderman's dog that comes back to life. Mm-hmm. Because if Judd's dog had been buried <laughs> in the pet cemetery, he would know about then it. Then he would know about it <laughs> like everyone in the book. Oh, man, this is... But we have to waste 
an hour of movie until Judd's like, there's a, a there's a burial ground that brings people back to life that we've heard two voiceover monologues about. <laughs> Crazy. This is so boring that I forgot <laughs> that he didn't know about it. And all of the editing mm-hmm. of them telling us something and then showing it to us and then showing it to us again later as that person was thinking about it. We got a flashback um, within the first 15 minutes. Yes. To me, something earlier in the movie. Uh, not something earlier in the movie. The something that had happened less than a yeah, minute ago. It was the direct scene before that. It was when Nor- it's Norma gets attacked by a dog. Yes. They're in the hospital. There's a flashback to Norma getting attacked by a dog. We, I think we all collectively said something, our version of, we know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we meet Judd and Norma together. It was mm-hmm. exciting to get mm-hmm. to see Norma because they are leaving for Michigan to join the Peace Corps. Uh, did that uh, intro to <laughs> Judd surprise either of you? Oh, first, I just want to say, because I have shit on this since before we hit record, and I feel bad about that. Mm-hmm. I like the chemistry between our Judd and Norma. Yes. Yes. I, I think it's, they, the movie is PG-13. <laughs> it's R. I claim. <laughs> and so it's like they could only, you know, touch elbows. <laughs> Yeah, I so I think did, they would have had really good chemistry had they been allowed to touch each other. <laughs> I thought pretty much everyone in this movie was completely without charisma. I, I think Judd, the Judd guy, the main guy, was trying really, really hard. I he, think he's he was hot. taking it seriously. <laughs> okay, that could be my problem too, but I swear he was taking it seriously. All those muscles. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That's why Schwarzenegger's won all those Oscars. Um, <laughs> Running Man. Yeah, I can't. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is a great movie. How many Oscars did the Running Man win? Two. Uh, best Picture and Best Adapted Screenplay. Makes sense. Um, what the fuck was I saying? I, what was your feeling on the how we meet Judd and Norma, oh, them meeting, leaving to join the Peace Corps? See, I did not understand anyone's motivation at any point in this movie uh, because they're joining the Peace Corps. This movie has been moved forward in time. Obviously, it takes place in 1969 during the Vietnam War. Exactly. (laughs) And so he tells someone that he's going to join the Peace Corps. He tells David Duchovny Mm. and David Duchovny very obviously is like, Oh, uh, yeah, my boy went to war and he came back. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> oh, he has a medal. I don't disagree like with yeah. with that choice not to make it, you know, people knew he died and then yeah. all of a sudden they see him. Definitely. But um, when like when he tells David Duchovny this, David Duchovny is very obviously like, yeah, it must be nice not going to fucking war. But Judd throughout the whole movie wants to go to war. But we find out that his dad has been keeping him from getting drafted because he wants him to go to Michigan because he wants it's all so dumb. He's his dad paid off the town doctor to put something in his chart like bone spurs Mm -hmm. or uh, dermatitis that will get him out of getting drafted. So it goes in there Mm -hmm. so that way he will not be eligible for draft Judd has no idea that he's not even technically medically eligible to be drafted. So when the draft notice comes up, it's like uh, when you audition for a play and the casting notice gets posted and you're like, God, I wanted that role, but he's not getting, he's not winning war, (laughs) which is so stupid. (laughs) Can I just say, as you were talking, I had the realization that the way you told that story just Mm -hmm. now kind of lackluster because you're not very enthusiastic about this movie was so much more exciting to listen to (laughs) it it makes it sound like something we watched was cool (laughs) it sounds like it told the whole story something to say and it doesn't it's right Mm -hmm. it's just for some reason the whole thing has such a weird like pro being drafted message well and it's i don't get it and what makes it extra confusing is that the idea basically like cm mentioned that it's 
he doesn't think he'll be able to leave, so he doesn't try to talk him out of joining the Peace Corps, mm -hmm. where at the beginning it's framed in a way that you think, oh, uh, he did he's that trying to, to keep protect him safe. Him. And yeah, yeah, he's trying to set, he's trying to let him leave yeah. so that he doesn't get stuck. But yeah, when In reality, uh... he knows Ludlow won't let him get away because Ludlow has been uh, dairyized in, in this. So why would you have to pay off the doctor? That's a good point. The, well, the... I think you're e right, economics. but I don't think they thought about that. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just a job creator. <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, we touched on it a minute ago, the reveal of my son's back from Vietnam. He he got a uh, honorable discharge. Everything's fine. Oh, my God. There's not like a, lot a of second groceries. scene. Yeah, right. <laughs> it really 15 is. 15 minutes have passed. <laughs> That's a big change because mm -hmm. in the story, we know that the entire town watched him fall apart, watched him grieve. And then a few days later, a shambling zombie. We're not going to show that because that would have emotional weight. Right. I. <laughs> so I don't understand. I get not doing both, but not doing either is weird <laughs> because <laughs> I, am, am I insane? Because I get like skip over everybody knowing he's mm -hmm. dead, but let yeah. him come back fucked up. So that he has something worth hiding uh, rather than just the fact that he still talks like a teenager and eats raw animals. Yeah. And, right. But he still yeah. walks around like a moody teenager all the time. Or let everybody see him grieve, go through all this process, and then let him come back as this super you dead mean powered thing. Make this part of the plot good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Here's, I'm just no bad ideas in a brainstorm. He, here's my thing. <laughs> the story of Timmy Braverman in the book. And even even though. OK, so in the first movie, they did have that one single shot of him gnawing on a leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But in the book and most of the movie, like the eating things isn't a part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, church kills and half yeah, but, eats things but, but timmy isn't like said to he's not a cannibal no. i don't remember it's, no, it's not part of it yeah, he okay. just shambles around and is wrong and that's so much scarier than he hasn't given people a reason they just feel it yeah, yeah. it's it's so much creepier when like in the first movie that scene in the flashback of I guess that's the dog when Judd's dog comes back and his mm -hmm. mom just screams, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, your dog's back. Give it a bath. It's, it smells of the dirt you buried it in. Mm -hmm. That is an insane reaction to just a dog being there. Mm -hmm. yes. I wish there was more of that. It's way scarier for people to just see him and be like, fuck, what's wrong with that yeah. guy? I agree. Instead of uh, <laughs> somebody, this felt... More like a vampire movie, yeah. The, because the the super speed stuff, the it like did, the yeah. dark, the trying to channel the dark charisma of telling people their darkest secrets. It it really the motivation seems uh, strange. Yeah, the the performance, seems confusing. the performance too. And okay, we've been sh we keep saying like we're just shitting on this. It feels bad because it, it's like, it's make like a movie. That's cool. Watching, Enjoy what you want. But it's so It's like watching boring. the CW. It reminds yeah. me of what I feel like, what I felt like when I, I'm going to use the word had. To, <laughs> and I didn't. But when I had to watch Lock and Key season one, <laughs> it is just, it was like, I, if I didn't have to do this, I'd stop doing it. Mm. I would just be like, nah, I'm just going to watch something else. I'm not into this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how did you feel about the characters of Donna and Manny? They were there. They sure were. I, I liked the idea of showing that there are Micmac people yeah, me too. still around. But they could you do did you not... have any idea how many? Or like because at I, times it seemed like it was just the two of them, but then I couldn't tell if there was a lot. There you never get the scope of Ludlow. It's like they didn't want to budget for like a big cast shot <laughs> you know yeah. but it's hard to tell everyone seems so isolated that's yeah i didn't realize that till you said yeah. it it feels a lot like that 
of the whole movie is just so obviously just looks so cheap. Like, of course, we don't see a lot of people because the movie's just not going to it's it went straight to streaming. Like, of course, they're not going to hire a bunch of extras. It's so bare bones and they spent all their money on David Duchovny and Pam Greer, <laughs> who is also there. So who they're are Donna and Manny? <laughs> a brother and sister. They're friends with. The brother is friends with Judd, or was at some point, and yeah, Judd and Timmy. Timmy. Yeah. So yeah, that's that connection. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's a photo of the three of them as kids in a treehouse that is, I think there are three exact copies of that photo floating around. They, and each, they, they carry each have, one. they each carry yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, in my wallet are a picture of the three of us. Aw. Pull I, out your pictures of us. Actually, at my oh, desk at friends. work, when is you, a Polaroid of all of us. When you sent that picture in the group chat, it literally it <laughs> yeah, made my day. It was cute. Yeah. Uh, no, they Donna wants Manny to get out of Ludlow because he's meant for bigger things. But why Somehow. doesn't she want to get out? Of, I no, don't understand. She's like an, she wanted to have an art gallery. Showing. I don't understand why it, she thinks he's meant for bigger things because yes. all we see him do is brood. Yeah. Yes. And then get mad at her for wanting to leave when she is has demonstrated she is meant for bigger things. Yeah. And she's like, Judd's joining the Peace Corps. You could be an activist. And he's like, Yeah, I'll get right on that. And uh basically does the jerk off motion mm -hmm. and then dances with his sister. But they don't have a bad relationship. No. He's just an asshole yeah, he, all the time. Yes. I don't understand. Yeah. And then because she peels her foot off. Oh, my God. Because Judd doesn't even act like he's treating him differently mm. than when they were friends. <laughs> well, let's jump to the the scene with Timmy Baderman and Judd and Norma when he's talking through the screen door again here. This is I'm so annoyed. What's the point of him still looking fine and hiding him? He looks, he, the, nothing yeah. looks wrong with him. What I'm, He's just pale. I just, I, I assume that, that there was a reason to hide what he looked like and there was no reason. That first shot when he appears in the screen door yeah. was the first time that I was like, okay, maybe this will have something. Mm -hmm. Because it's a cool shot. Yeah. He's obscured in a really creepy way. But yeah, and then it leads to nothing because he's kind of gray it seems like there's something, <laughs> when you do that you're telling the audience i have something to reveal to you mm -hmm. and i'm building the tension for that and for it to be a guy yeah and is then, annoying and then in, instead of hearing about whores we hear about the paid off uh draft dodging which I, is a this judd's arc i guess <laughs> i feel like is being shoved down my throat like care about this yes stakes are high it's like, you keep telling and me that, but just telling me that doesn't make it happen. Right. His arc is stupid. <laughs> His arc <laughs> is he wants to go to war and then he so goes to war against the pet cemetery. Spoilers, yeah. we'll get there. The very deep message. <laughs> and then that's good <laughs> that he does that. Yeah. I, As I, what? He's a it, hero for giving up his life. When I thought that was a direction that it was going... And I don't know how, like a couple minutes, I think, before it started to do that. And I was like, it is where it's going. I said it out loud to like, to take away the power of it being true. And it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so disappointed. There's, there were several things they could have done at any point to just, uh, they could have made a few choices smarter. And this would have been a lot more tolerable. Okay, so I that's a good segue into just to break up. I'm going to need some breaks from talking about this movie or I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about something completely unrelated. Mm. I don't know if you all have heard about this uh, project that is being worked on, but right now the release date is 2025 for a project that is an anthology, a, a short story anthology by a bunch of different writers that all take place in the world of the stand. That's rad as hell. It sounds pretty cool. And like some of the writers that they have are like kind of exciting. 
Bev Vincent is writing. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, awesome. Wayne Brady. Nice. Well, I don't understand, <laughs> but I want to read this book. Yeah, I do. So the entire time I was watching this, like I said, this is this movie is bad fan fiction. <laughs> and I thought, well, what would I want in a, a movie or a book or anthology story based around the mythology of the Micmac burial ground? Mm-hmm. So I thought we could all go around and uh, pitch our short story idea for our pet cemetery anthology that we are writing now. Well, I mean, I know the exact story I want. Okay. And that's Hanratty the Bull. Mm. I was begging for that to be in this movie. Huh. Because I thought the movie was going to essentially be an anthology of Judd's life from like nine years old to mm-hmm. old man Judd and see. That, that would have been good. Because he mentions a total of five times he has been. And so I, I was like, what a great opportunity to explore. You have a five act structure right there. Mm-hmm. And it, everything else was just thrown away for convenience sake. That's that's kind of the direction that I anticipated too. I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an answer? So mine is a sequel that takes place in modern day and it takes place from the perspective of the Wendigo, <laughs> when yeah. a serial killer begins burying his victims in the Micmac burial ground, <laughs> nice. the Wendigo must use his PI license to solve the mystery and bring the killer to justice. I love it. Perfect, I, you know what? Yeah. Yes. I'd do it. <laughs> oh, it's called it. Pet Cemetery <laughs> Detective. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Pet Detective. Yeah. And it stars Jim Jim Mac Wendigo pet detective. (laughs) Oh, I remembered what I was going to say. I had a similar thought about the structure of it being Judd's life, like being that story played out for us, which would have been really cool because Judd is such a cool character. There's a lot to draw from there. And again, I'm not this story. I don't have a problem with the idea they had. (laughs) It's the execution. I don't like as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what... What sucks is that we basically see three days. Yeah. How much time passed? Probably. I have no idea. I 48 hours, maybe 72. Because day one, they're going to leave, but Norma gets attacked. Mm-hmm. While Norma's still in the hospital, she gets attacked by Donna. And then that goes into the finale. So, like, yeah, two days, two, three days tops. I don't think this story was well served by spending that little time in Ludlow with the characters. That is really interesting because until thinking about this story being about 72 hours, it makes the sense of urgency in the cult uh, that we're about to talk about seem very crazy because mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. I, there's a phone call that I believe Eve, Eve you described as the most boring phone call you'd ever seen. Jesus Christ. It, <laughs> it's just a... The worst written exposition dump where two characters are like, my God, it's back. (laughs) It sucks. That was more exciting than the scene. Yeah, they 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 pennywised the Wendigo and make it like they did. They're like, yes, it makes things disturbing. It's reverse it. It's reverse it. The adults are the guardians. They're (laughs) handing down the lore to their children who are going to get old and take care of it themselves. Yeah. Oh, um, what is it? it? It's thrown out there that Judd's grandfather built the deadfall. Yeah. It just as a, another piece of yeah, your family is, in it's the a legacy thing. Founding Opening families. voiceover. He's like, we built the dead, uh, deadfall. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I keep saying that I don't have a problem with the ideas they had, but then I, I'm just shitting on all of the ideas. So I think, I'm just saying that to try to sound nice, but I'm lying. (laughs) (laughs) Um, CM, to the best of your ability, Mm. explain the Guardians, this uh, the C story happening in this very long movie. So when their children start dying in their sleep, the Guardians realize that the creature they banished was back and it was going to take its revenge on them by killing all their children. Sam, I believe that was Nightmare on Elm Street that you were referring to. 
Oh, yeah, they nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> the founders are the 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 people who founded this town. Mm-hmm. We actually get the... We get to meet Ludlow. The, the, <laughs> sure. It's fucking so dumb. At lunch. And <laughs> this... Oh, this is the part where I thought, mm, I know why I'm not enjoying this, because I didn't enjoy Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Something I was very excited for. It had Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell love the russells and it was like this a plot b plot with the a plot being focused on the kind of not teenager but very young adult kids Mm -hmm. who are trying to figure out what the secret that their parents have is and then we jump back in time to basically kurt russell his son plays as as a man that age and that was really cool but every time we're back in time Evan and I were like, oh, yeah, okay, this is pretty good. And every time we were in the present with the I don't give a fuck about Mm -hmm. anything you're telling me about the story about these kids, it we're just like, Mm. this is so boring. Like, I don't care what they're doing, what they're saying. Just hate every moment of it. That's how this feels. Because we cut back to the The mail carrier, the mail carrier. Oh, no, sorry. I, I'm jumping way ahead. Oh. When we go back in time. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. And the the explorers are, are trying to. The founding, to, yeah. Yeah. So they end up being all the people who found the town after the Micmac burial ground had worked its magic on. Something else about that I didn't realize until thinking about that scene that takes you completely out of every single moment is how clearly modernly manicured everyone Mm -hmm. is because the man that dies back in 1964 has just like a nicely trimmed and lined uh, um, 1864 uh, 1674 (laughs) oh that's even better yeah (laughs) and it's like just this perfectly clean and manicured beard and they're like oh no this is not at all the same thing with the the makeup like nothing is none of the period look mm-hmm. is done except for the costumes yeah there is no effort put the in cheap, hair and makeup cheapness of it yeah but it seemed more interesting because it was different <laughs> <laughs> can can we talk about other movies we also hate instead of this movie because <laughs> I, I liked when cm told us about a different movie for a minute <laughs> But I have because so you didn't many have things to, watch to talk it. about. Okay, okay. Nah, can, can I just take a second to explain Cool World? Uh, that is a that really good movie. It's not a second. Yeah, it's a complex movie to dive We're, into. We and just it's, should it's cover amazing. It. That should be a high <laughs> it's speech. A, it's, yes, we should be oh, Then I would have to watch Cool World. <gasps> it's terrible. It's so good. It's You're amazing. both so right. <laughs> yeah, yes. And that's why we need to that's, watch it. Yeah. Uh, there is a scene with uh, Timmy Baderman and Donna and Manny where he prophesizes they'll never get out of here, which one of them does. So it's a, a liar. <laughs> um, and it's she's making the masks that we see in the remake kids wearing to the cemetery. And he just says, your masks won't protect you. And then later there is a what is supposed to be i feel like a really deep and meaningful conversation between her and her brother where i think you know I, i'm not even going to get into what i think exactly let's just get into <laughs> how she explains he because she's like something is wrong there is something bigger here happening and her explanation for him being like, why do you feel that way what do you mean she says the planet is old there's good shit and bad shit <laughs> And we don't know where it comes from. The planet. Checkmate. Comes from the planet. That's that's deep. That had me thinking, y'all. It's it's a There's well good shit written, and, and we don't know it's where. It's a well written statement. <laughs> <laughs> but it and that's the thing is to the actor's credit, she delivers it with Oh, sincerity. she's trying. They're all trying. She yeah. gives it her all. But it is so lame prophecy of I think what does that mean? Nothing. It doesn't mean anything. What does she say about why she's drawing or why she's making the masks? They're some part of like a, a ritual of protection. Didn't she say something about like dreams or? Yeah, she was having dreams and seeing these masks in oh, her dreams. That's, okay. And that's why she was crafting the designs this way. I'm sorry, did we already talk about that? And no. I just 
Okay, I thought maybe I so blacked boring out. And is never important <laughs> okay. later. Masks never come back in any <laughs> meaningful way whatsoever. Hey, they wear them at that dance. They do have a dance. Oh, yeah. I mean, that looked like a fun party. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Sexy Judd, <laughs> where he is woken up in the middle of the night to uh, seeing the shadow of the top of someone's head out of his bedroom window. And I really, really like the boxers with boots no. look. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know I'd like Describe that. Describe the scene. So he gets out of bed. And I th- I want to say that his boxers are red or they They're have yellow. red in them. Or They're yellow. Whatever. The They're... important stuff. Yeah. And he works out, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> he stands up and he just has like... Just like this long, narrow torso. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. He looks like John Krasinski's younger brother. <laughs> he has sideburns. Yeah. So he goes to the hall and he gets a gun <laughs> and runs out after the shadow. Oh, this is creepy, though. This was cool. When he looks at the window to his bedroom, which is on the second floor i guess one and a half yeah it didn't seem very tall yeah it's just a high window i think it seems like he could have jumped (laughs) anyway (laughs) there's a ladder there and he's really like creeped out and you can tell this is like oh this is like supposed to be a tense moment right i mean i think the actor probably Mm -hmm. thought that's how it was gonna happen Mm -hmm. post-production and he goes into the street and he finds a picture Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I love that. <laughs> and he finds the same picture he has, or his picture, who knows, but with their faces burned out. Mm-hmm. And there's a cigarette butt there. And I think there's some spooky sounds in the cornfield nearby. And he turns around, and his dad, who we had seen sitting on the porch before, it made me sad, <laughs> is sitting there, and he's sort of like, Judd? Uh, before that uh, we have a a fake out with a semi quote semi almost God. running Judd oh in my, the road the and fucking that's when number, we're like geez, the yeah. number of like <laughs> hey remember this is like connected to a good movie they kept, <laughs> remember that they kept forgetting that that's a, an integral part of the story and i feel like so they were like ah fuck okay we'll add it here and here that's it. Yeah. No, it's and it serves no purpose no. to the story. It is simply to be like, remember how there are trucks in the first pet cemetery? I was so angry about how they did that, where it was like With it's all a the very lines. long road and there's no way the truck basically a magically appears appeared out of, out of nowhere he would have heard it or seen it the lights would have splashed his dad who is sitting right there on the porch and that's, why, that's would so have funny been, that's why yeah. his demeanor when he's like judd <laughs> yeah he just like watched it yeah. happen it so, didn't even say anything when he's stuff. sitting there and can see the whole street i feel like i'm screaming it is so stupid <laughs> do you think this his dad is was how thinking, i am with stuff <laughs> do you think judd's dad was sitting there thinking i'd bury him if he gets it well <laughs> judd's dad is the one who has told us like three times in a row sometimes dead is better so maybe that's what he was thinking <laughs> he keeps oh, fucking maybe. saying it but, and uh, when the, his dad dies trying to say it that's right? so he, fucking funny it's sometimes so dead is b- and then he gets stabbed in the back he gets run through with his own shotgun hilarious <laughs> so, so okay well, sometimes I, I like shit like that, that that was funny yeah that was, I'm, that I'm was into great it. oh we got to go back though so sorry no. yeah he yeah that's way ahead <laughs> we keep that's, trying I think to end three it three hours into the movie <laughs> this, is, <laughs> <laughs> this is another thing that i realize now that i'm going through my notes that re- took me out of it fucking completely we are what year are we in 1969 nice <laughs> thanks And when Judd comes back in in his boots and underwear back into his bedroom, a figure does come through the window. I'm sorry. Can you please describe that the correct Mm -hmm. way? So his thick thighs carry him astride Uh, over the threshold. Oh, you knew what body part which just cut right to my heart. (laughs) The wind whips his boxers and a little dangle (laughs) appears. Oh, no. Too far. Aggressive. Sorry. Uh, But... Uh, he Manny, just wanted to make it stop. Yeah, I did. How. I did. And Manny comes pouring through the window. That was funny. Funny, but then his first words are, "Why are you sexy?" Uh, that... And it was very funny. Yes, I loved Does... that. Yeah, but it doesn't 
fit. No. At all. And like it's it it's again, it's just one of those things that takes me out of this is technically a period piece kind of like there is a, the tone of the mm-hmm. era is 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 important. I get, that is how you would show a a close male relationship in modern yeah. oh, storytelling. No, 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 oh, hold on, more. hold on, hold on. Josh, didn't you see at the very, very, very beginning? You might have missed it because I, I they didn't keep it up there for a very long time, but it said 1969. Nice. Yeah. So we're good. <laughs> we're good. Summer we're good. of love, we're Josh. Good. Never mind. Point retracted. <laughs> summer of love. We did keep wanting them to kiss. I have no they idea. They did if have that's a lot of summer chemistry. Of love. Yeah, they did. They, they were more intimate with one another mm-hmm. than Judd and Norma were allowed to be. At this point of the the movie, we had this conversation, CMU mentioned uh, what would have been an interesting idea to explore because we see Judd's dad going through a, a diary that Judd finds at a church that was hidden in an organ. Nice. <laughs> and brought back. And it's the stories from the settlers. We get that big flashback. But then Focusing on the generational. Uh... I so f- the first I have to admit the first part of it that I liked I like the setup of that is because I have a soft spot in my heart for the better movie that did that, <laughs> <laughs> the fog, mm-hmm. there the finding the diary in the church discovering the secret of these people, um, you know, kind of responsible for this town these leaders in the town and then the the cycle of I, yeah i called it the generational like trauma cycle <laughs> yeah. kind of that is a social work part of me but the this like a curse revisited kind of an it story mm-hmm. again yeah and to take that route in a a you know a prequel i guess just something taking inspiration from a section of that book so not doing it the way you know you talked about earlier that i i agree would have made a lot of sense and would have been a really good story. This is a really fun way to make a good story. But then I wish I could say it more gracefully <laughs> or eloquently than this, but they didn't make a good story. <laughs> yes. It, it, it misses the mark. It really, it really does. Yeah. Because that's and like even the cult stuff, like in, in the drawing spirals and blood, which we didn't even talk about, like the gore and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And this is nice, by the way. Yeah. But all of that stuff just amounted to nothing. And it, it it's like, they're like, oh, if we throw this, you know, X, Y, and Z in here, that'll be cool. But they didn't understand what it was or care about it or know what they were doing. I don't, I don't know what the problem was exactly. You ever read Uzumaki, Junji Ito book about a town that gets possessed town. by spirals? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, I did. And that's yeah. when I realized. The snail things. Yeah. I can't read him. Junji Ito, that's fair. <laughs> it, that it, story it, scra- it scrapes against my brain. Mm-hmm. That's why I that love it. That story just <laughs> keeps going. Yeah, I read it all. Yeah. yeah. And I think anyway, that's a good I just first wanted, and last. That's a better movie. use of spirals. I, I just wanted to briefly mention a good thing I'm, in yeah. this thank episode. You. Honestly, yeah. thank you, Eve. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> Everyone should be horrified Ooh. and read that because it's amazing and will give you nightmares. Yeah. Now, they, they do a quick jump back to... Um, we're just going to gloss over the dog attacks the mail carrier. The mail carrier kills the dog, meets the other founders and says, I killed the dog. Let's go kill Timmy. Oh, also, that's exactly how it happened. Yeah. That yes. interestingly. Yes. <laughs> and I love also when they have this like group of guardians meet that they're like this person's name, this person's name, the sheriff. This person, he's the only person who does not get named. I didn't even know who they were. I (laughs) didn't know who anybody except Judd, the other three we talked about. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we get to a what should have had some impact, but didn't at all. And it is a scene where, uh, as any parent of a teen will tell you, walking into a room and seeing the refrigerator open and the kid's face just in the refrigerator. But he's eating an animal inside the refrigerator in the scenario. And there's this wonderful exchange where uh, he asks, uh, where's the dog? And Timmy says, dead. And he says, is that his blood? He says, no. And then keeps eating. And then he like, uh, tries to make some uh, flaccid appeal to him. But like, Timmy, Timmy, my boy. I don't know why I made him an old man. 
Uh, but then he walks by and goes, Timmy's not here, leaves. And then David Duchovny has a, a breakdown and cries. And that's when he becomes a good guy. Uh, that's <sighs> the that's the arc. That's how they show him transitioning to a good guy, because the next time we see him, he's just like part of the team. Oh, I wondered why. OK, I missed that. It, 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 yes. Okay, it, I, it was not enough watching Bill Baderman break down and accept his mistake should be a huge fucking deal. Yeah. I should want to feel bad because it's it's the monkey's paw of realizing the thing you want has damned you. Mm -hmm. And it was it was thrown away like a moody teenager. And what I will do the first time Mallory tells me to get out of her room, <laughs> which is go into another room and cry for a while. <laughs> like it, just, it had yeah. zero weight. It's a fucking bummer. It was almost an amusing scene. So bad I, I'll take good. your word for yeah. it. No, just just because of the way he was like, is that his blood? No. <laughs> yeah, just it was. the way the actor, because he his back is to us, and we can see carnage, but we don't, you know, whatever. Um, he's not like hamming it up, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we passed over that uh, Timmy murders Donna because it doesn't. It's boring and no one cares, and he drags her to the, to the burial ground and buries her, and then she's back. Honestly, I cared about her probably second most. That's because saying a lot. <laughs> that doesn't mean I cared a lot. That's what I mean. I just it shows yeah. how little you cared about such a minor character <laughs> who then uh, just basically comes back as an equally deadly, fully cognizant murder machine. Uh, again, uh, so much more There's vampire no energy than yeah. a zombie energy or malicious yeah. When to go uh, and, less tack energy. I would have taken some tack energy. I hate that you're right about that because it makes vampires sound stupid. <laughs> and they're not. They can they're be. They're not. They, there's a, there's no, plenty of vampire media even, that regardless. <laughs> don't even like brutally prove me wrong with one, <laughs> with one word. <laughs> uh, let's talk. Uh, what did you think about the hospital slaughter? Uh, because we thought we were never going to see Norma again because after she gets bit by the dog, she's okay. gone. She doesn't have a scene with any of the major cast after like the 20 minute mark until the very end when she rejoins Judd after rescuing herself. OK, it <laughs> for me, this moment was like, let's say CM 15 Pet Cemetery Bloodlines one now, because right, <laughs> literally right yeah. before the scene, I threw such a fit about how they finally give us Norma and then they they basically sideline her mm -hmm. and then we cut to Norma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would, would you care to walk us through her uh, escapade in the hospital? I feel like I just did. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought you'd want she, to talk about the foot slaw. Thing. Yeah. So she sees. I don't remember her name. Donna. Donna. And she was your second favorite character. I know. I don't remember her name because Donna's not in the book. That's the only <laughs> That's reason true. I remember Judd or Norma's name. Wait, I, I did not look to make sure because I assumed when I would hear the names, I would recognize from the, the posse story mm -hmm. because those characters, the names of those characters are already there for you. Mm -hmm. He Stephen King gave, gave you them mm -hmm. and. Yeah. None of none. Of, I don't think any of them were any of those names. <laughs> Granted, again, this is alternate universe. Not uh, this is different level of the tower. This is the uh, fine John Lithgow cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not John. <laughs> I don't like that. John did I love this. John Lithgow. OK, anyway. Yeah. Donna comes in all vampire sexy almost. And Norma's very concerned for her. She's trying to help her. She starts to wash her feet and just immediately the skin on the top of her foot just comes off. There's a this is it, the, the second and the actress time that playing Norma starts to like there's a yeah. tear running down her. She, and she's like, you can tell the tear is fear, but she doesn't know why she's afraid because it's her friend. and yeah. She's concerned. <laughs> She crushes it. Th yeah. This effect is the second time that something like this happened because Timmy did it earlier in the movie when he pulls mm. out this stringy meat from his. Oh, oh, it's so gross. So he can paint in blood. Yeah, yeah. it sucks. It that is a yeah. That's earlier. I said the gore yeah. is real fun. That's yeah. A couple examples of that. 
But the then Donna stands up and reveals her dark truth that, that she thinks she's better than other people. Oh, Norma. Uh, <laughs> Nobody like, thinks that. Fucking like devil got her. Fucking <laughs> like rattle a cage. Yeah, uh, Inexplicably, well, she's like, you think you're better than rich people yeah. and poor people. But, and I'm <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you think you're better than the rich and you hate the poor. She basically <laughs> said, like, instead of making it an actual problem, making Norma seem like maybe she mm. could be a piece of a shit. A piece of a shit. <laughs> Maybe she can be a piece of shit. She's like, you hate everybody. Right. Uh, yeah, join the club. Sure, huh? yeah. It was yeah. so lackluster. And then she chases her around and magically teleports to the opposite side of the hospital God. in front of Norma, which angered me. And then uh, she chokes her with a broom handle, I think. And again, I was like, is she going to die? Because mid choke we cut back to judd confronting his parents or he already did that i don't know he's he is then racing to the hospital he shows up at the hospital to at- find out she's not there yes so we have to go back to the hospital for no fucking reason well when he we could have done it any other way like he could have said later like i couldn't find norma at the hospital oh my god that's so, so i was just about to uh well cm you and i realized how funny how unnecessary it is because i was going to say the the justification for going there is that he sees farm written in blood on the floor and that he's like that's where they've taken her but when he pulls up everybody else is already there the po- he's the last member of the posse to show up so he <laughs> maybe went- they all got messages <laughs> no they all just put it together much faster i guess I was hoping that farm was just their favorite body of land they were identifying. <laughs> <laughs> Eve, what did you think of uh, when everybody splits up? Because obviously it's a horror movie. Mm. And one group goes to the barn and gets systematically picked off one by one. It, <laughs> this is why you watch slasher movies. Yes. Is the people getting picked off one by one. And it is so late into the movie. And it is done so rushed and sloppy. I could not care less. I, <laughs> I, it was absolutely padding a kill count. Yeah, that's all it was. Well, yeah, because Judd, Judd discovering the truth and his dad coming clean about everything and taking him to the pet cemetery mm-hmm. and all of that happens with like half an hour left. Yeah, I maybe. Think. Yeah, and even that felt like because I, rem- I think I even said it out loud. I was like. Oh God! Is this like the start of the climax? Yeah. Is this yeah. supposed to be a yes. moment? It just he's, turns yeah, into a, a speech, a huge exposition dump. That that once again is exactly the ex- exposition dump from the beginning of the movie. And that's well, why now I we wonder, know how Judd knows it. But, <laughs> See, that's how that's what uh, it yeah. means. We have to watch. <laughs> we have to understand everything twice. They keep doing <laughs> that to us visually and with storytelling mm-hmm. or editing. I don't. I don't know which. The uh, inside the house, th- the one that really got me was the uh, the stables going under, squatting down, and then okay. moving he over was two feet. Looking under each one, down. like yeah. the stables had a wall between them, <laughs> and they, they didn't. Did not. You could literally see all the way down through yeah. all the stables, <laughs> and then then. She, sorry, just you couldn't see it. that but that was fucking that was sassy intense, yeah. i gestured i'm so sorry no that rule it's at the movie not at you <laughs> <laughs> good because i didn't feel safe okay uh, good <laughs> he doesn't choose to put his head all the way underneath <laughs> the door of the stable until he comes to the one that somebody is in so they can grab him by the head and drag him under so I completely expected it because I'm like, well, yeah. yeah, he's giving. Why would you make him do that like that? Mm-hmm. And they, they didn't even show and like something like inside that would give him a reason to be like, oh, what the fuck is that? And to look, it looked exactly the same as the first two. It just happened to be the last one. So I guess he had to climb under. It made me feel and like it's also instead of stand up and open it. It mm-hmm. made me feel like, but in a bad way, I was watching two wrestlers give each other their bodies to pull off the move. <laughs> That's, I love it when you talk about wrestling. <laughs> that's, what, that's how I see that, wrestling. You, that <laughs> sentence, it's like two wrestlers giving each other their bodies. That sentence is so much better than every single thing in this movie. 
if you had handed me that sentence written on a piece of paper, I would have been like, green light it. Oh, shit. Paramount, I have a movie for you. Oh. <laughs> we we need to get into the most important debate this movie gives us, which is the argument of don't shoot versus don't help. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, Manny is getting attacked by Donna. She is slashing him over and over with a scalpel, which she had previously used to like explode someone's entire blood out of their body. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I so gave up on the hospital really scene. Who, who she cares? Killed everybody, the doctor's neck is twisted. Yeah, yeah. It, who, big who cares? Uh, but she's slashing Manny, and Manny's yelling, "Don't, Judd, don't you dare shoot her!" Because he's got a rifle. Because he's got a rifle. He's aimed at her. Yeah. And then he's just like standing there watching. He's like, "Okay, I won't <laughs> shoot her. Do you want me to do something else?" It's so, it's so funny. He, Pam Greer Especially dies. The, the actor who was playing Manny is like uh, uh, clearly trying uh, to me. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to act as though I am being slashed through the legs with a scalpel, and I'm content just saying, "Don't shoot her! Don't shoot her!" <laughs> He's saying, "Shoot me," because I'm so <laughs> much pain. That's what he was trying to say. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I'm trying to, to just rush us. Pam yeah. Greer dies. Although I do have to say Pam Greer does give us my favorite part of the entire movie, what? which is when she is at her house reading something. I don't oh, remember. She's Timmy, sitting at a table. Timmy quoted her dad's suicide note. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And you think she's gonna do something. And then the dog shows up and leaps at her and growls and she goes, ah! And then it cuts away and you're like, oh, she got mauled to death by a dog. And then it cuts to all the other guardians in a diner. And she shows up and her face is all torn up. Yeah. And they're like, what the hell happened to you? And she's like, I got fucking mauled by a dog. And she is fine. It just, and yeah, it's, on. I think it's my favorite part of the movie because it's just Pam Greer off screen got to do something totally badass <laughs> and also, then showed up like everything was OK. Also, a week must have passed since that dog mauling Fucking because right. she, her face would have to be wrapped in like gauze or bandages mm -hmm. yes. and she would be bleeding. It looks like a very severe wound Can't that trust. she got last week. Yes. So they, uh, nobody can seem to shoot Donna. So no, because you have to shoot does. him through the eye, just like in the book. Uh, yeah, the the way the way his dad throws it. By the way, you have to shoot him in the eye, and then moves on. And there's no, it's like, so you, unnecessary. Oh, we, so, we saw it's someone in the else journal. say that in the flashback. Mm -hmm. It's still, it's so pointless. Uh, but Ooh, why? Doesn't why bother? Yeah. And it doesn't work because he shoots. He shoots Donna. His dad shoots Donna in the eye, and then. She's not dead because she shoves the gun shoves through the, yeah. his torso, so mm -hmm. which yeah. is a fun it's kill. Fine. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun kill. I like right. it. Right. Um, let's see. Oh, and then so the. Oh, hold. I'm sorry. Wait, we never got back to this in the movie. Sorry, this is jumping back, but then we can jump way forward. When Judd confronts his dad about paying off the doctor, because that's what Timmy said or his dad said to him. Who knows? He his mom gets up to make she's every time things get tense she's like i'm gonna go bake a pie <laughs> it, she doesn't say it in an accent but so she gets up to go bake a pie and we get a glimpse of her leg and there's blood splatter all over her leg or dirt we never come the, back to yeah. that i didn't understand all right so sorry jump, jump no. ahead again that was just it was a spooky moment and now i just realized what, what was that about right what happened uh so, uh so bill baderman walks back in the room and says house is on fire gotta go downstairs and oh yeah, we can serve. We can. I swear he, he said, said we can wait it out in the cellar, and then they immediately go into these tunnels under the cellar. I was like, wait, aren't you? Wait oh, the tunnels must lead outside. But then they split up within the cellar. So it's like, if the tunnels lead outside, wouldn't you all want to go the same way? What are you looking for in the cellar? They're that trying you're to find Norma. Up? Because why do they for think some she's reason, in the tunnels? Because for some reason Judd looks down to it, and I then wasn't the only one not paying. And then it to cuts. Who was paying attention? No, well, it, it, I'll, <laughs> let me explain it. They they are looking down the tunnels, and then the movie cuts to Norma tied up in the tunnel, and then cuts back to Judd looking down there, and Norma's down there. So the you see the movie showed us she was down there. So that's, oh yeah, yeah, so yeah got Judd it. Knew. Okay. <laughs> so then yeah. they all go down the tunnel. 
Uh, we are so ripping off <laughs> pitch meeting. Like, you are writer guy. I'm producer guy right now. <laughs> I love it. So they uh, crawl through tunnels for a while. We periodically watch Norma uh, kind of drown in a mud bath, which that was, a, that was I'm, nice. I'm, <gasps> what? She had. What the hell? It was a spa day. She had. She got a, a mud treatment. You know. <sighs> sorry. Okay. You Deep know breath. when you see. A scene in a movie with a character who is trapped in a coffin. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that they can't sit up because it's mm -hmm. filmed like in a, in a space that is appropriate to convey that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that Ryan Reynolds movie. Norma yes. was in a room laying on the <laughs> ground with water gently yeah, it was weird. filling up around her. But she yeah, never sits up to get out it of the water. So... Until the very end when she... by If, if I understand the mechanics by... While laying horizontal, kicking the wall below her, it opened the ceiling vertical from her uh, as the mud slid. <laughs> and then she just climbs out. Then she finally sits up. And climbs the thing into she could the do the whole time. Yeah. Which means she could have just probably stood up and well, clawed her okay, way out. Well, okay, here's where the movie could have saved itself and done something cool. Because the scene of... The outside of wherever she is, which is unclear. <laughs> it looks like her kicking out like dirt and rocks, yeah. kind of. It's like a silhouette, like something raised. Yeah. I thought that she was in the Micmac burial ground. That would have been such a good And idea. I was like, oh, this is. So we think that she's been kidnapped because like she's gagged and stuff and she's struggling. Mm -hmm. But what if she was actually killed and he put her there like he did everybody else or Donna put her there? And this is it's showing us what it's like for them to come back. So the reveal that is going to be very cool. She's not escaping. She when she runs to into Judd's arms shortly after that, yeah. she's one of them. Yes, like, that would have been such a fucking good idea. Yeah, we should write this movie. That would, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because we again we we know that we don't get Norma in the JLCU. Anything. Yeah. Uh, oh. So yeah, I Judd figured Lithgow. Having, <laughs> having her die would make sense, and that would that would be such mm -hmm. an effective way to use it. Mm -hmm. You know no. what I think this movie could have used? <laughs> Solomon Stronger. Grundy. Ooh yeah. Just she's in the mud, and she gets up out of the mud, and also Solomon Grundy climbs out of the swamp. <laughs> He's who helps her out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the movie yeah. takes place on a Monday. <laughs> so then the movie. I like that we all kind of locked in on it at the same time and gave the groan it it deserved. They get out of the tunnels. It turns out, I guess, the tunnel from the Baderman house goes all the way to the Micmac burial ground. Sure. Why wouldn't okay, it? Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, because the, well, the reason that the tunnel fills up with water is because that's apparently under Little God Swamp. Oh, the that's way right. They showed yeah. the map Where Solomon Grundy okay. lives. Don't think the, about how he got her into a tunnel under. It doesn't. It's not important how <laughs> the point. The movie showed us it was there. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, actually, right, right, right. there are several times this movie shows us that if something is not actively on camera, <laughs> then it doesn't matter what uh, it can. Uh, things can <laughs> behave in any way they want if they are not actively being seen. Yes. Timmy multiple times is standing somewhere and then. The camera cuts away and it cuts back and he's just gone. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay, and, sure. And, and the distance of where he is to where hiding would be is vast enough that Judd would have seen him. Or he heard would still something. be he'd be quickly shuffling away. <laughs> <laughs> Catch him. We see, we've seen how he runs fast. Like oh, we've he, seen what it looks like. Very oh funny. my god, that's why they were showing us him move fast yeah. because. Oh, so, 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 so that you can imagine him doing that when he's off off screen. I don't want to. <laughs> um, so they come out of the tunnel into this this area, and M Judd is dragging Manny, who is he, he fucking useless. The rest of the he, the whole movie is useless. Mm. But um, I forgot hear, he was in the rest of it. <laughs> they hear Timmy in the woods, and he sees like a tripwire set up, and then we all kind of looked at each other and we're like. It's a war. Vietnam it's thing. a Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Timmy set up Vietnam traps. And then as soon as that moment happens, Judd immediately launches into, I'm not leaving you behind. You're my brother. And then I'm he gonna, it, starts wading hip deep through a swamp. <laughs> and you're like, okay. Yeah. yeah, it 
it turns into like, look, Judd got to go to war just the like he yeah, wanted. It's now we can respect him. So pointless. Yes. He's, interesting. One of the, his dad earlier says that you're a hero without a cause, which is like a rebel without a cause, but worse. Which means nothing. It absolutely it's does mean gibberish. nothing. It's word salad. This movie sucks. So, so they they shoot everything in the eye and everyone <laughs> dies. And then it ends with uh, a shot similar to when they were packing, except for it's them moving into his parents' house. Well, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I hate this so bad because the way the way that what comes back kills in the book and in the original movie has the true terror of grief attached to it. This doesn't. This is a horror movie about zombies killing people. Mm -hmm. It's a vampire slasher. Yeah, not a movie about grief. Yeah. It sucks. Oh, sorry, I just realized that's my say. underlying issue. That's why I'm so angry because, mm-hmm. okay, sorry, go on. So uh, the point is they, Judd says, I'm not holding you back. And she says, no, it's it's our time to take watch. So Norma's on, on Team Guardian. And they march right past uh, his mom, who I forgot was still in the movie mm-hmm. and alive. Like they're and, moving in yeah, to they're her just, house. That's just like, get out, mom. Mm-hmm. Like I just oh, imagine yeah. they kicked her out the next day. This is where I... <sighs> I had the movie fixed again. So we had several scenes, the exact same scene, it felt like, of Judd's dad at night sitting down in the rocker on the front porch, Mm -hmm. lighting a cigarette and just watching. Yep. So this watching thing is supposed to carry weight. And so when Judd sits down and he lights a cigarette, I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if... The music was kind of neat in that moment. And and he does a voiceover thing, which I think the actor did did a good job of. And I'm fine if they wanted to have a voiceover part over this, too. But visually, just wouldn't it have been cool if as we're realizing like, oh, this is why Judd never left, because we want to make him trying to get out of town, have a payoff. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to know why he didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And they shit the bed on that, too. Mm -hmm. But which is also (laughs) stupid. But he if as he's like sitting there watching and the beats with the music happen, it like jump cuts like 10 years, 20 years. And we get to the Judd we first met and just to see him like over and over again, keeping watch after all these years would also make the weight not of, not just of him, not actually ever being able to get out of Ludlow mean something, but it would also give meaning to the whole story they're trying to pull off with the the generational trauma the burden of being the guardian of this thing in this town that also yeah. makes judd a way shittier person in the real pet <laughs> cemetery for telling fucking lewis about it oh fucking christ yes uh, it's all so stupid oh, yeah that's right really but wait choice, my idea was good though it, it, was it so is a good, good. idea very very jerk good me off but yeah, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> sucks because it makes Judd, like, in the book, oh, I've lived in Ludlow my whole life. And it's like, oh, because he's a kindly old yeah. homestead kind of guy. He's just old-fashioned, and he has a history with this town. It's his home. And now it's like, I've lived in uh, Ludlow my whole life, and I hated it. I'm trapped. The, yeah, I'm <laughs> trapped, and I want to leave, but I can't. It sucks. <laughs> I've lived in Ludlow my whole life garden demons <laughs> yeah <it's> like, <laughs> well but they didn't even i don't know it's oh. C, again uh, it's it's cw it's yeah yeah and, and it has I no guts for some reason the last shot is of uh manny getting out leaving which is good for him who gives yeah. a shit and no one cares about that i kind of hoped he would die right and because i thought the nobody you'll gets never, out of ludlow well yeah, mm-hmm. the demon had said you'll both die in ludlow so i was really waiting for like a sad twist where he yeah. get uh, pancaked also would have liked that. It would have been great. Would have been yeah. at least trying something. Uh, uh, before we get to ratings uh, for this movie, I want to say, listeners, in case you noticed that in the middle of this episode, I just didn't talk for a real long yeah. time because of how little I paid attention to the middle of this movie. Well, I used that time wisely. And I, I uh, have been feeling creative So here's a limerick. There once was a man from Ludlow and a cemetery that made him say, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. That's a mighty mean rud, said a young sexy Judd. But his (laughs) wife likes it in the butt, though. (laughs) Beautiful. Long story short. (laughs) 
that that made watching this worth it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll just go ahead and start if that's Ooh, cool. I was just kind of hoping that was your rating. <laughs> <laughs> Limerick out of five blue shamrock shirts. No, uh, so I I feel bad because I can think of two movies that we have watched for this podcast that are worse than this. So, Three Big Driver. <laughs> Big Driver. Big Driver. Uh-huh. I thought you could go four. Yeah. Honor, honorable mention, Cell. <laughs> Okay. And Zach Efron Firestarter. I I disliked okay. uh, Zach Efron Firestarter more than had... I disliked this. Oh, man. oh I like I just like this thing more. Is, I yeah. don't remember. I know I gave Big Driver one or zero out of five stars. <laughs> the thing is, like, if I gave I don't know, this is maybe slightly <laughs> better than Firestarter. I feel like I maybe gave Firestarter two stars, but I can't. I can't. This is one out of five blue chambray shirts. It's so goddamn boring. And it it's not good. Don't waste your time. Mm. I think the people who like the things that I also shit on during this episode, like the, I keep mentioning the CW in, in a negative way because that station for me produces things that should be good and aren't. And it pisses mm. me off because some of the things are like, just like intriguing or interesting enough that I was like, damn it, I want to like this. I want you to have done well and you didn't. It's how mm-hmm. I felt about Lock and Key. It's how I felt about the the Godzilla spinoff I mentioned, Monarch. And there are a lot of people who love all that. And for those people, I think like if listener, if that's you, you probably will enjoy this. You'll probably think we we're super harsh on it. So I will add another chambray shirt to that rating eve and i'll give it two out of five blue chambray shirts wow wow damning with faint praise (laughs) yes a two out of five from cm alexander is meaningful (laughs) that's true i am so guilty of damning things because they're not how i wanted them to be because i'm a bit of a narcissist (laughs) um (laughs) I just think you should do it the way I asked for it. It would have been better. It would have been better if it was the way I needed it. And I spent a good chunk of time thinking, is that my problem? No, it's a bad movie. (laughs) It's badly executed. The, The story for the story was so much heart. I Eve, I think you nailed it on the head. It Judd is a guy who who lives here because that's just his life. He, he's a simple dude mm-hmm. uh, and he he guards a secret. He, he doesn't guard uh, against an evil force. He's just a man who carries the burden mm-hmm. of a secret he has. And that's what's meaningful is the burden. Mm-hmm. This is not an action hero story. And also, I just I feel like I don't get how this Judd becomes that Judd. Mm-hmm. It just it doesn't. No, it makes sense. They're not to me. the same character. No, they're not. Uh. I am so disappointed that I'm monkey's pod by mm. getting something that I I, I love. <laughs> I talk about it all the time. I love this. Like, give me a chance to dive into a, a strong prequel story. Give me spinoffs. I'm so excited for the Welcome to Dairy stuff mm. to see how that tells those stories that we want to see. So I really hope it doesn't shit the bed. I'm pretty confident it won't. I do love Billy Scars. But you're mm-hmm. right. But this shit the bed on everything it had the potential to do. Uh, I'm going to go uh, never watch it again. One out of five blue chambray <laughs> shirts. Fuck yeah. And that is it for this episode of Dairy Public Radio. As always, thank you for listening. Join us for our next episode where we will be covering the story Man in the Black Suit from Everything's Eventual. For Joshua Khan and Eve Gatto, I'm CM Alexander reminding you, stay the fuck out of Ludlow. <laughs> Hey everyone, CM Alexander here. Thank you for listening to Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. We hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought of the movie on our Facebook or Instagram at Dairy Public Radio or X at Dairy Public. You can also send us an email at dairypublicradio at gmail.com and you can chat with us in our Discord. The link for that is in the show notes. Don't forget to check out our Etsy store for merchandise and our Patreon for monthly bonus episodes. You can search Dairy Public Radio on both of those platforms. That's all for now, listeners. Goodbye.